Hi everyone, it's Jerry. I thought we can have a look at another Leela Chess Zero game. It's been about 10 million self-play games since I last put a video out with Leela. Here are the current stats. This page is one I've referenced before and it has changed quite a bit. Self-play Elo. They made an adjustment with how Leela trains and when they did that it took a huge nosedive. And I think it also influenced the number of users that were contributing. Since then, it has rebounded big time. At the moment, it is at an all-time high. ID 458 with 19 million plus games. There's also this ELO estimates tab. You can check all this out. I'll have links to this page and one other one that I share with you. And they also have something a little different down here. Active users, daily top 50, monthly, and overall, getting about 120,000 self play games per day, thanks to uh, these users. And here's one other page. I've referenced this before, or referenced this before. Uh, CCRL estimates. When it was at 395, it was at a 3039 CCRL estimate. The ones in green, are considered experimental, so feel free to check this stuff all out on your own. Last time I did a video, it was right around this stage. Anyhow, let's dive in and see this game. Leela has white, ID 445. Houdini, you should know, has a rating of a CCRL rating of 3185. That's what makes this one very impressive how easily Leela just seems to squash Houdini here. Now, we have, I don't know, can we 100% call this a Jinji Indian? Certainly this move is one of the key ideas in the Jinji Indian to give up this prize bishop for knight exchange in order to damage the queen side. But the normal follow-up that I'm, well, the one that I'm familiar with, is to guard e4 with the f-pawn. We don't have that. It's knight f6. So if this isn't a Jinji Indian, it's certainly a very, very close cousin of the opening. So how exactly does white set up the pieces here? f3. Now, at first glance, it's to me, it says, okay, you're supporting an e4 advance, but there's another point. There's a wonderful pocket on f2 for the king knight that is incredibly effective from this post in supporting a kingside pawn advance. From here, black castles, and we have knight h3. The bishop is not there in time to take the knight out, and only after d6 do we have the quick knight f2, getting out of the line of fire. One thing I questioned is, well, suppose black didn't castle here and prevented this little maneuver? Well. White can always make very useful moves like e4, queen c2, bishop d2, maybe even bishop h6, not allowing uh, black to castle. And eventually, black will have to deploy the knight to d7 and put a blindfold over the bishop. That will be white's moment to pivot on h3 and then get into the f2 square. So there's plenty more useful moves, in other words, that white can be making than black can be making if there's this little fight over the h3 move, knight h3 move. In this game, it's castles, knight h3, knight f2, and after queen a5, how to defend c3, and bishop d2. This is an important note. I thought that it's these two moves can be played in this position, but there's a, there's a big difference. If you defend with the queen, She's no longer around defending d5, and this would give black an opportunity to play b5. If you take, d5 falls. What's the difference with bishop d2? The queen isn't watching d5 here either. The difference would be if black plays b5, you can take, and if knight takes d5, there's c4. Hitting the queen and the knight, and if the knight blocks, we take advantage of the pin. So bishop d2 on board, knight b to d7, 
e4 sure enough knight e5 there's a bit of a timing or a bit of a race with pressure on c4 the knight is now hitting it in just two moves the bishop will be there as well bishop e2 note the knight bishop and queen have an influence on the g4 square this enables f4 without fear of a pivot on g4 this knight will soon be flushed away in the game b6 and we don't castle castles f if you castle right here there'd be bishop a6 and then f4 one move later the knight would take on c4 f4 right now black has lost a lot of time went to e5 and just a move or two later has to go back meanwhile these pawns continue to march and this is not these are not the only pawns that will be contributing in this game all kingside pawns will play in this one so from here castles bishop a6 g4 h6 h4 knight goes back queen c7 connecting rooks and rook to d8 that's a pretty clear sign that black is busted <laughs> when you have a closed file to closed file type move it's almost like i mean black just passed you know there's there's nothing constructive here for for black and it's even worse than that after rook a to e1 what's what's the thing in this position there's many things you could say about the position but what is it about this position that sticks out to you most it's not the typical question i throw at you but uh what is it about this position that kind of grabs your attention feel free to pause the video okay of course there's no one right answer to this but i'll just give my opinion or you know how i see it the queen she only has one move she's ba she basically does not contribute in this game she played to a5 and after b6 it's almost like a self trap she has a3 big deal the bishop on a6 is targeting c3 that's defended big deal black is playing without the queen and the bishop and without any space look at the knights two second rank knights a fianchetto knight that's usually an indication you're going to have a tough day at the office here we go h5 breaking down the king position chop chop knight f6 this pawn is being hunted that doesn't matter though e5 knight takes pawn knight g4 what's happening with h6 it's falling from here f5 giving the king a square at least after this pawn is captured it has h7 knight takes h6 king h7 where does the knight go he doesn't need to go anywhere king f2 giving the knight up it's captured but look at the queen look at the bishop and these two rooks will soon be playing rook h1 the king has to run i mean there's already ideas to sacrifice a rook and get the other one over here again black is without a queen in this position a queen and a bishop black tries to run but there's no running this is well busted rook g1 rook takes knight and we know the direction this one is going in it's game over made on board coming up move 34 this is when you know it's really bad <laughs> when houdini is making moves like this there's simply no defense when you have this kind of activity on the king's side and the king cornered literally queen d3 is looking for queen h3 make it only be prevented for so long queen takes c3 bishop takes queen and just mate in a couple queen h7 for mate now i know i went through this one quicker than usual there really wasn't too much to say <laughs> once we saw this little setup this little maneuver with knight h3 to f4 this is just really really impressive now it's still too fresh of an id 445 to know exactly what strength it really is ccrl estimate but you can be sure i'll be keeping a watchful eye on uh 
its strength and what you know where exactly it is any any thoughts by you guys feel free to let me know in the comment section below what do you think its current strength is this was a real thrashing anyhow feel free as usual to leave any feedback in the comment section below i hope you enjoyed it and maybe even took a thing or two away that's all for now take care bye <music>